Hi guys, in this video we will look at different WebEx widgets. The WebEx UI library supplies over 80 fully customizable widgets and controls to help you build interfaces of different kinds, nicely present data and work with it. There are also helpful extensions, integrations with third-party tools and specific features to make your application good-looking and user-friendly. Let's dive right into the real power of WebEx and I will tell you about data management widgets. Data widgets are used to present data of a specified type on the page. Such widgets provide the space allocated for their data and provide functionality for its access and configuration. Let's create a table of clients with some functionality. Also, let's add some simple sorting, filtering and search. For this purpose, we can use data table widget. Data table is a pure JavaScript component that provides professional look and feel and convenient programming model for displaying data in a scrollable and sortable table. It's a powerful yet easy to use control that supports different data sources like XML, JSON, CSV, JavaScript array and HTML tables. It also has various possibilities like filtering, sorting, pagination, resizing, styling, copying and that's just the beginning. Still, it's very fast with handling thousands of records. Let's create customer JS file in JS folder and add it to our navigation. We need to initialize the data table. The usual view, ID, CSS and data. Data consists of ID, full name, gender, birthday, branch, card date, that's when client card was issued, level, notes, phone, email and notifications. Columns configuration is specified by parameter columns and all settings are managed on this level. Each object in the columns array specifies a single column. Normally, you need to specify an array of column configurations for the data table, which allows setting various parameters. At the same time, you can switch a data-based column configuration provided by the autoconfig property. In this case, columns array is no longer needed. Data table will analyze the dataset passed to it and build columns automatically. The columns will have different values. Here we can see how our data table looks. Let's add few columns. If you set ID, then it automatically links column with same name data attribute. Since then, you can sort, filter, edit and interact with data. Header cell can contain a variety of things, plus built-in data filters and HTML content. I'll leave the last one without data. By default, data table columns feature fixed size of 100 pixels. But we are getting only started. Since I will be looking at the result often, it makes sense to set customers as initial view. And now, back to columns. Let's add more config to columns. And padding around elements would be nice. Since we set column ID, the column is automatically linked with same name data attribute. We can look at how sorting works. Let's set some width and enable sorting with numbers. Fill space true will make the column stretch in the available space. For column sizing, you can also use gravity and adjust properties. And here the sorting will be by strings. Let's look at how filters work. For that we need to add another cell in the header with content property set to desired filter type. For each select filter we will need to add options. Notice it took me a few seconds to implement sort and filter functionality. And while we're at it, let's remove scroll so that it doesn't unnecessarily reserve space by the data table. Now that that's done, we can define our own custom type for icons. Here's how we do that. And then just apply the type. In the template, we access our custom type through common. Think of it as predefinitions for complex templates. But still, this one is quite simple. Let's add a pager. We will initialize it as a separate widget in layout. And it will be linked to the data table by ID. So here are the main properties of a pager object. Size, the number of records per page, group, 
the number of pages. Page sets the page that will be shown initially. I'll skip this one. By default, pager looks as numbered squares accompanying the component. But at the same time, you can change the pattern with the help of custom template. There are different types that you can set. Here I will have previous page button, page numbers and next page button. We can set borderless to true and set up height for 5 rows. Alternative is setting auto height to true. So that our layout has the necessary height, we can add a spacer. It's a borderless empty view. It's used to fill a layout cell if it's supposed to be empty. It can be initialized by a simple curly bracket construction. Let's add some additional header cells. And I will add style to data table and pager. Now let's make our data table rows selectable. You can select a cell, row, column, multi cell, multi row, multi column, block selection, and area selection. The default is row. Let's try it out. We can make the table editable with editable true and we need to set desired edit action, in my case double click. Each column must have editor type, for example text. Let's add two buttons, add and delete customer, add a spacer at the end, We will disable adding for now. By writing a simple click function, we can then delete rows from data table. Since we have a delete button, we can leave only edit symbol in the actions column. We will work with that in future videos. The finished version of our data table. There is a lot more that you can add with data tables and data management widgets. You will have to explore that on your own. Let's have a quick look at few data visualization widgets. WebEx visualization widgets provide the possibility to display data in various forms. You can use them in your application to present data in a nice and clear way. You can create bullet graphs, gauge, organogram, range chart, tree map, maps and barcode. Also, different types of charts are available like line, spline, area, bar, pi, 3s pi, donut, scatter, radar and others. Let's show all coffee shop branches and staff that works in a specific coffee shop. I've created shops JS and added it to the menu with shopping cart icon. Also, I want to keep our menu collapsed since it takes up space. So here we have an empty view. Webex library allows to embed geographical maps into the app with the help of its own components. Four maps are supported. Google map, here map, open street map, and Yandex map. UI related maps inherit from you. Let's create a map. But pay attention that before working with WebEx Google Map, you need to get a personal Google API key. We will have a column layout. It's really fast and easy to initialize a map. ID defines the unique ID of the widget. Copy the unique Google key for map. You can find more info on that on developers.google.com. Some CSS for later use. Zoom defines the resolution of map object displaying. Center says the center of the map, it's an array of two elements, latitude and longitude, with comma delimiter. Data will also contain info about coffee shop coordinates and we can also set custom marker. I saved mine in images folder. If you are working without a local web server, then there is a possibility that Google Maps will not show. It's better that you set up your own local web server, since in future videos we will discuss more advanced topics and you'll need the local web server. Now. Let's create an organogram. It's a WebEx Pro widget, but that doesn't stop us from exploring its possibilities. Organogram is an organizational chart widget for creating hierarchical diagrams. It inherits API from Tree Store and Data Store. The component's appearance can be easily customized. The component items can include various HTML elements, for example photos, and can be styled according to the user's needs. Let's define view and ID. The widget supports data loading from different sources, 
So let's say you can get updated list of staff members through a URL that contains valid JSON data. Here's how we can get that info in our organogram. Instead of data, we write URL. The URL parameter is used in conjunction with the data type parameter. If data type isn't provided, the component will expect data in JSON format. So here's a URL that contains basic staff member data. By writing this link in your browser, you can check the data structure. You can customize the look and feel of organogram items by using templates. Firstly, template will contain name and occupation of the person. We will create a function which returns HTML. For that, we can practice creating templates. We can add some customization through item, margin X and margin Y, horizontal and vertical space between two items, list margin X and list margin Y, space between the vertical line and block items. Line color is the color of the line that connects items in organogram. You already know that width stands for width of an item in pixels. It must be a fixed number. We can set select to true so that we can select an item for organogram. Select can be true, false or multi-select. And finally, let's add images. We can check if a person has image and we can set a default image. Here's the route to default image. I put it in the images folder. I want to add images to persons and if the person doesn't have an image, I will show a default image. We definitely need some CSS for the organogram and images. Here's the organogram with some style. So I want to see which people are working in which coffee shop. Let's create an item click event. We give it ID and marker object. Let's make it bounce on click. We use clear all because we need to clear data in data store. It removes all items from the widget. After that, load new data and we can make the marker bounce two times and stop. There are also specific widgets. These widgets will help you to complete the picture of your application and add special features that can be achieved with the standard set of widgets. Let's create a document tree, a PDF viewer and an uploader. Let's start with document tree. For that we create variable doc tree, which will hold the tree initialization. Tree is a pure JavaScript component for building various tree Hierarchies. It's a powerful and customizable tool with lots of features. Support for XML and JSON data sources, static and dynamic loading, multi-tree, drag and drop, inline editing, optional checkboxes, state saving, filtering, sorting, copying and others. So we initialize a tree. Then we can add some CSS. We will use ID to add elements to the tree. We can set width and data is where we will add initial data for our tree. Tree has built-in support for internal and external drag and drop. To enable drag and drop support for a tree, set the drag parameter to true. By default, selection is disabled in tree. To activate it, you should set the select parameter to true. Let's add the component to layout and see how it looks. We can add a PDF viewer. It will display the content of PDF files on the screen. The viewer is recommended for use with the dedicated toolbar that contains buttons for paging and zooming. Viewer and toolbar are initialized in separate layout rows, like this. The first one a toolbar, the second one with the viewer itself. Here is how it looks before style customization. And here is how it looks with some style. Let's add minimal amount of functionality to our tree. As the selection in tree loads a document to the PDF viewer, we prefer to prevent selection for branches by returning false from on before select event. Here count indicates whether the data item has any nested data. We clear the data and load a file. The URL is prefixed by binary keyword. That refers to the loading proxy. We can add a little message that it indicates if the file is missing. And here we set the selection to newly added element, as it is already opened in the viewer. Loading process that was described above is blocked here 
with block and unblock event. Notice that PDF toolbar is supplied with the following fully functional controls. We can also download our file. Let's ensure that we can add new elements. For that, we can add the uploader view. Uploader is a component that allows users to upload files. It allows browsing directories on your machine to choose the necessary file or files and send them to server. I've made a new folder for our documents and upload code. In the upload property, we can add script that will be responsible for upload. In our case, it will be PHP. This is a really simple variation of uploader code that you can make for yourself to fit your custom needs. The uploader button initiates a window for browsing files on your machine and choosing the necessary one. Uploader can be customized to accept only particular file types during the upload. Types of files allowed for uploading are specified in the accept property. If you would want to upload images, you could give the accept property value customized for images. But we will stick with PDF. I have prepared a template with some custom styles to make the uploader fit in overall design. I will add a template and few style classes. Let's write minimal code to take a little peek at functional side of uploader. So here we need to add an on event. More precisely, on after file add. It will add our new file to the document tree and parse the PDF. Uploader can be used standalone as well as integrated into form or UI component. Here is how it looks. There is a lot more to the functional part that I purposely didn't talk about in this video, so be sure to check out other Webex video courses. This course is dedicated to visual part of Webex, which enables you to develop interfaces very fast. There are also other types of Webex widgets, like context widgets, that let displaying spatial and temporal information on some user's actions, such as click on a button or filtering in a field. We already looked at some layout widgets in the previous videos, there are also HTML-oriented widgets, and we cannot forget about Webex complex widgets. They are complex widgets that offer a wide variety of functionality. We can take a look at these widgets in more advanced future Webex courses. They are worth the while to explore. Let's take another look at what we made in this video. Altogether, it took us few minutes to create part of the UI for a coffee shop management system. As you see, it's easy to create widgets and the properties are very intuitive. Also, widgets come with functionality that is very easy to add. We will take a separate look at form widget and different Webex components in the next video.